want to remember this moment just in case it's real. I might be having this baby in the next day or two. I'm having some cramping and contractions. So let's see, I think it's the fifth, right around noon, or maybe one, so getting close. Hey Jasper, I just did the midwife's brew and I finished it at like 12.50. Um, I'm really excited to meet you. I hope this will kickstart my labor and 39 weeks in a day. Eight. She's the most, you know. Okay, Jasper, so you didn't come yet. My contractions went away, but we had some wild stuff happen. You looked kind of almost like a, t a tumor on my belly. It was crazy. Okay, Jasper, so I told like everybody <laughs> that you were gonna come like two weeks before my due date, because that's what I thought, and tomorrow's my due date, and you're not here. Can't wait, Jasper. I get a text all the time asking when you're gonna come, and I wanna go crazy because I don't have the answer, but I know God's timing is good, so. Well, I'm laying here in bed, and I have a lot of butterflies in my belly, and I don't know if it's just because I'm nervous or excited to meet you, or if, you know, just random butterflies, so we'll see. Papa's here. Everybody's here, we're ready for you. Mm. Well, this is my second attempt at the midwife screw. What do you think's gonna happen? Is it gonna work, yes or no? Uh, I don't know if he's on support, yes, but I hope it works, so. It's gross, but I love you and hopefully I'll meet you soon. Jasper, Baby's still in there. Where are you? You're late. Midwife screw did not work again. <laughs> so now we are. What's the date? Today's the 19th, 19th. So two days after your due date. Tomorrow is induction day. Woo! Say big brother. Big brother. brother. Can you say baby Jasper? Baby. baby Jasper. Might take a few hours or days. We really don't know what to expect, but we're getting close. How do you feel? We are ready for you to come out, Jasper. It's moving day. We're moving in. <laughs> Do that now. Okay, so I'm laying here in the hospital bed. I got my fancy dancy thing. I had fluids because my baby was needing it. But we're gonna do ultrasound soon. That's what that machine is. And then I get put on the meds. Check out my food. I got my meatballs. Potatoes, salad, bread, bowl of cookie. Got some coffee for Sean and ginger ale. Okay, now I'm in positions to try to flip you, Jasper, because you're sunny side up. Which bad news for me means if we don't fix it, Doc will have to stick his hand in there and turn you around. Just took my second round of meds at three, and now it's three thirty-five. So we're doing pretty good. Jasper and I'm having contractions right around every five, four minutes and 30 seconds. Sometimes I get them every two minutes and they're really hard. Here's Sean holding my monitor and I tried to sleep but I peed all over myself and I woke up and I thought it was my water breaking but it was just pee and that's okay. But after that, everything got a lot more intense, so maybe there was a little bit of something that happened there. Who knows? But I have changed so many times today, it's not even funny. I tried a shower, I tried a bath, and then 
I started moaning and screaming because <laughs> this freaking hurts. Jasper, you're hurting mommy's back. You are. I have back labor. All over mommy's back. This is insane. So I know I'm happy right now because I'm doing a video, but I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Yep. <laughs> Now here's what's gonna happen. They're gonna push around a lot. It's gonna feel crazy because you're gonna go, oh my God, the epidural isn't working. But what's gonna happen is they're gonna push really hard in about two minutes and you'll hear them say uterine incision. That means that they're gonna start pushing real hard for about a minute here. It'll be uncomfortable even okay. with that epidural in, but then basically you should hear crying pretty quickly after that. Okay. A lot of pushing now. This is the uncomfortable part and I apologize in advance for it. And again, you let me know. It's going to be brief in duration, but if you need some narcotic medicine, I can add that too. But again, I don't. I think, you know, again, we got about a minute to get through, and then, then we'll be in good shape. Okay. The epidural looks like it's really working well for you. Good job, Amy. I'm trying to do that. Here it comes. Ready? All right. Doing great. So what we're doing is we're going. To, you're going to feel some strength. tugging. Just this will be uncomfortable. This is where he's going to reach down and kind of get the head out of here pretty quick. It won't be long in duration. You're doing good, baby. There's some dark hair. Dark hair, yeah. 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 Oh my god. And the cord was around her head, so he's undoing that. Your head. Your head is out, honey. Good job, you guys. Look at that. Yay. Whoa. Nicely done.
<laughs> Good job. And Jasper has some new for you. Thank you. Look. That's so sweet. Look. Brian got this for you, Jasper. What did Jasper get you? Wow. Say thank you, baby Jasper. Oh, what's that? Is it a cape? Wow, thank you. That was very nice of you to share. It say super bro. Obviously I didn't film the rest of what happened um, past the contractions um, other than the actual C-section. So let me just tell you how it went. So basically um, we went in and I took that medication that's supposed to dilate my cervix. I had two of the most amazing labor and delivery nurses who made it so I didn't need to be afraid of any checks. Um, they were willing to wait and let me do a lot of those checks because I was being induced um, until I got my epidural, so that was pretty amazing. Um, my epidural didn't really take, but that still was really kind that they were willing to do that. Um, basically, within, let's see, I got to the hospital um, Thursday and we ate food in like six hours they gave me my first dose and then the next day came and uh or later that night i think it was within six hours yeah or every four hours they gave me they gave me another dose and then um i remember falling asleep and i woke up like maybe two hours later and i stood up and i thought my water broke but really i just peed myself that's okay you know but right after that, ironically, I started getting really intense contractions, which is pretty interesting because normally, um, from what I understand, um, that doesn't happen with just this medication. Normally you have to have, uh, is it, I think it's called Pitocin, for your contractions to start because this is just a, a dilation medication. But my body was ready, 41 weeks and ready to go. So they had me on all these monitors and... Um, Every time I had a contraction, your little heart rate would go down. So we were just monitoring it and um, making sure that you were tolerating the labor well. Um, so I labored through the night, um, didn't get any sleep after that. Um, there's videos that are very embarrassing of me being way louder than I thought I'd be dealing with contractions. Um, I had back labor because you were a beautiful sunny side up baby. So that's why my sciatic nerve hurt so bad throughout pregnancy, but that's okay. Um, I'm really proud of myself. I worked through it with your dad and he pushed on my back that way um, I could handle the pain. I found that my most relief was in the shower. So I'd recommend showers to any of my fellow mommies who have sunny side up babies. Um, it can really help just relieve the back pain. But as labor went on, the bath didn't really help. And by the time it was like seven in the morning, um, or maybe eight, I couldn't handle it anymore. So I got my epidural. And I recall when they put it in, I kind of moved a little bit, but I was able to be still. And I had a contraction in the middle of it. So that was really cool. Um, but I did it and I had tears on my glasses. I'll have to put a picture on this little video I'm doing of just trying to be still, but it wasn't bad. And I would encourage anybody who out there who's watching this really long video that you can do it. Epidurals are just a little pinch. And, um, but yeah, it got placed and they were saying that because I'm tall, um, it was having a hard time spreading very well. Um, so I felt like it was effective everywhere except for the one zone, which I won't be too specific about, that you really want it to be effective. <laughs> Um, so being a, you know, trauma victim, I was really afraid of the checks and, um, even though my epidural wasn't crazy effective in that area, um, I was able to do it. Your mommy was strong and, um, I got my cervical check done and 
I had been, I dilated to six and was 90% effaced, which is a huge deal. Um, that means I was in active labor. I was a lot tougher than I thought. I thought it would only be like, I don't know, two centimeters. I just was, I don't know. But that was really encouraging. And then after that, um, even though I still had pain, I was able to um, close my eyes for a bit because I didn't sleep the whole night, so I was really tired. Baby still, you weren't tolerating labor very well, but that's, you know, the doctors and midwives were monitoring it and they kept having me move positions to try to get you to rotate. Um, at this point, um, I was woken up and told that, hey, it's looking like um, your placenta is old and because of that um, we're gonna we're gonna encourage you to um, that's probably why the heart rate's accelerating in addition to other factors and um, it just looks like we can't even move on to the pitocin because we think we need a c-section and I didn't really question the team because I knew they really cared for me and they loved me and I know that they don't really want c-sections so as a midwife team so I trusted their judgment and knew that they um, wanted to do what was best for you. But I'll be honest, I was so scared. I was shaking. Um, at this point, they'd already broken my water artificially, is that how you'd say it, with a little hook, and stuck a monitor inside just to make sure they could really um, get my contractions settled. Um, just to see, not settled, but see where they were at. Um, the most painful part of the whole process was the catheter, which TMI, but I didn't expect that. I guess I just felt it more than some people do. Um, but yeah, so we moved into the operating room after switching a couple anesthesiologists because there was someone who needed a more urgent C-section than I did. And I remember your daddy wasn't able to come back there with me at first, but our midwife offered to be there when they cut me open which I was really thankful for. And then dad got to come in and I was shaking because epidurals give you shakes and probably adrenaline too. And I was really scared. Um, I was scared I was gonna lose you. I was scared I was illogically gonna die. Um, but God was ever present the whole time. So within three minutes, you were born. Um, I remember the anesthesiologist telling me what was happening the whole time behind the little drape. And um, I was, I don't know, completely out of it because I had all this medication. Um, they weren't able to do a spinal block, so we just did the epidural. Um, it gave me way more of the epidural, and it was effective. I didn't feel pain, but I felt pressure. Um, I felt pulling. I told my, told John that kind of felt like they're like, tugging and sawing your belly, but there's no like pain. It's weird. Um, obviously you'll never have to experience a C-section because you're a man, but it was, you know, I did it. And I, I would argue that both have their intensities. Um, I forgot to mention before that they said that I was likely dilated to eight centimeters, pretty close to being able to push right before this, but that's okay. Cause this is what the plan was. And I was very emotional because I really wanted to be able to do this um, the traditional way, but God had different plans and perfect plan because um, you had pooped in my womb. It's something called meconium, I think, uh, several times, so it was not a good situation for you. When you came out, you had the umbilical cord wrapped around your neck two times, um, which is a lot, um, and dying placenta, so really you know, the situation being induced, you know, was probably part of what saved your life. So I'm thankful that we went in when we did and that you came out and you were the most healthy I'm looking at you right now. Beautiful little boy I've just ever seen. And man, I'm lucky to have you. Um, when they pulled you out, you are seven pounds, three ounces and 20 inches long and the most perfect human I've ever seen, even though I was loopy. Um, and past that, my postpartum journey began and it's all been much easier than I thought it would be. Um, praise God, in light of it being a C-section. And we have been so supported through the whole experience. So I'm very thankful to the Lord. The Lord is good, I want you all to know. If 
you're watching this because you're gonna give birth soon that regardless of how your birth plan goes, whether it's to what you wanted it to be or not, um, trust that your medical team is gonna try to do their best to honor what you want. And if they don't ask for someone different, but I was very lucky to have two ladies, Alex and Avery, if you ever watch this, uh, Tacoma General, who were just my biggest advocates. And my midwife, who was just the sweetest lady I've ever met, Jody Gutierrez. I will sing her praises because she really took somebody with trauma and was patient and kind and made my experience a lot less scary. I felt so selfish that I was so afraid because I had this baby in me and I wanted to do what was best for them. But I can say that I did way more than I thought I could do. And I hope for anyone out there that has background trauma or pelvic floor dysfunction can know that to just believe your body can do things you don't expect. And I pray that you find comfort in the Lord and knowing that he will never leave you nor forsake you even when you feel afraid. So now as my journey goes on and I enter this new stage of being a mom of two, I'm praying that I just grow closer and closer to God and be more and more of a sacrificial mommy. But the best light that's come out of it has been Jasper. And my breastfeeding journey has been wonderful. And I think that's just one thing the Lord has given me right now. And I think He is a God who gives, and even in ways we don't expect, and a God who also has a deeper plan than we know. So. This is long, but it's my story, and I don't want to forget it. So I'm recording it for whoever wants to watch it, maybe just me. And I probably forgot things, but whatever. <laughs> um, I love you, Jasper, and I love you, Sean, and I love you, my sweet boy, Brian. And I wouldn't change my family for the world. <laughs>